It is November 5th, 2018. This is Atlanta United FC Weekly, a home before dark podcast. Oh, my. Damn it. I was almost. I had to remember to turn my volume off on my phone. It almost got it. It was just a hair off. Are we a little echoey right now? Probably. It's probably the acoustics in this room. You know, it'd help if we have a lot of stuff unpacked and decorated. This should have been top priority. Yeah, it well, wasn't. A little disappointed. <laughs> Yeah. Are you guys getting echo or anything like that? I just want to make sure that it's at well, this point, it doesn't really matter. We're live. Yeah. Fuck it. We're live. Fuck it. We'll do it live. We are. Dan's not. Yeah. That's true. Dan's maybe not a show. Here. Maybe typical. He Who knows? Typical, typical Dan. I, I, I can make it. I can make it at eight. <laughs> if you won't give me a call on a telly <laughs> and I can make it. And then he's not here. He's no. not here at all. No. Anyway, I am Tim Herbin. As always, I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Mr. Kevin Bradley. As, across. as always. That's, yeah. that's one dependable. Dude, yeah. I feel like you need to switch up the intros whenever Dan is on because you you lump him in with the same, as always, I'm joined by. And it's unfair to me whenever I show up on time and ready each and every week. It's easier for you now, too. So there's really no yeah, excuse. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. If you guys are watching us on YouTube, make sure you hit that little subscribe button, notification bell icon. Also hit a thumbs up for us if you guys are watching. Yeah, I feel like with this camera angle, we really need to rework it because I don't feel comfortable enough with the top of my head and the lack of hair that is still remaining to not wear a hat and record live. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Can you put a Snapchat filter over the top of my head like a Wooly Willy or something? Ooh, I don't have that snap. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah it'll it'll be, it'll be in here uh it'll be there next week for the last recording before i'm on Shit, the couch we got a long time listener first time trapper y'all yeah we got will balron her B- B- boron boron like what? like i can't tell can you zoom in on that chat i don't know yeah i can zoom in on that window a little bit because it is real oh that's so much easier yeah he said omg see. long time listener first time caller y'all oh yeah we got the typical faces we got the typical faces so <laughs> Lopez, Richard Gordon, Brittany S, Bill Holcomb, Kendrick, Brock, Magda. Thank you guys for tuning in. Glorious, glorious night. Fine, Last night. night. That's why it's it's worth it to have not recorded after the loss just to come back after a win. It feels so much better than having to on top of work and everything else, it just didn't work out to record after that Toronto drubbing. But I, I know you're not a fan of the mentality. Or the argument of, well, I kind of wish the team would lose because then they, you know, <laughs> fires them up going into the playoffs. Yeah. But I'll be damned if it didn't seem like it worked. <laughs> yeah. No, I would. Um... That, along with what I said, was going to be the issue. What? That if we go into that game without Miggy or Tito, that I had serious doubts. And that definitely came to light. And then you saw the opposite of that last night against NYCFC with both of them being in, we'll, we'll get into the nuts and bolts of it eventually, but uh, definitely a different look out of Atlanta last night than we saw on the road against Toronto. On they, which, So I'm pretty sure they were playing at Five Points Station last night. I couldn't really tell. You've been there to the station soccer fields in Atlanta. And yes. I, can, I can't tell the difference outside of the seating between the station soccer fields and Yankee Stadium with NYCS. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's pretty damn miserable. At this point, Don Garber, get your shit together, man. Get your shit together. The the sheiks have all the money in the world. They they can definitely purchase a stadium straight cash, homie. <laughs> Inside of any borough they want, in in any place they want, they can displace whoever the hell they want, and they can put a stadium in there. But no, it's fine. Yeah. We we just have to deal with the shitty field, the constraints, the the optics, the optical illusions for the players, the <laughs> the fucking turf, the divot the that divot LGP was, put into the ground on that tackle. It's insane, man. It's absolutely insane. All right, so housekeeping before we dive into it, do we uh we finish up the second leg of the fantasy season? Uh, we did. Hold on, just one second. Let me pull it up. Dan, While you're pulling it up, I'll read Dan's update. Dan said uh, he thought it was eight thirty. Why? Why would he think that? Because uh, typical Dan, he, maybe we should just start telling him at 7.30. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Good grief. Yeah, sorry guys for if, the, if there's any uh, echo in here. This room's not as big as when, the other room. When have we ever re- started recording at 8.30? All this, all, everybody that gets that bell notification knows. I mean, even if he thought it was 8.30, he would if he was subscribed, we'd come back to the same argument. Had he been subscribed with that bell notification, he'd know that we were live, and it would have been 
10 minutes yep. ago now. It's just, it's just, it's an, just now time applying. and time and time again, we are just reminded of how plastic Dan, I completely Daniel James agree. Is. All right. We do have a winner. FC Apogee, Nathan Lyons. Congratulations. We will be in communication. We still need to get John F. Beasy on here too. Again, Gotta get both of them. Yeah. Yeah. Get the, uh, get the debate show going on. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, change my mind segment between yes. the two of them. Yes. <laughs> yes. What we'll do. Okay. So we got this new uh, studio wall. Obviously, we'll fill it up with decorations and stuff. We'll get some of those, um, like the big poster boards for like what he does on the change my mind thing, you know, and we'll just rotate out different ones that we'll put up behind uh, in the studio and you'll see it on the webcam and they have to read it out and then change our minds on one position or the other. Yeah. <laughs> for different arguments. We, we got to get it. We have to get something like that together. Next Monday is a big event because it's my last recording in the studio before I am incapacitated. Oh, so we need to figure that out because we're going to have to like record in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany, we have, or uh, not Brittany, sorry, Magda, we have AC and we have a ceiling fan. Hopefully you guys can't hear that ceiling fan going, but it's, uh, it's feeling good in here. Uh, I just did some uh, well air special reserve today. Another benefit of Tim's new house is he has a great liquor store nearby, which was awesome. They had plenty of well air on stock, which most stores don't have regularly. So figured I'd rotate in a new bottle, a bottle that I normally keep on the shelf at home, but never really in studio. So one I of these I'd days, grab a bottle. Yeah, one of these days on these work trips or these leisure trips, I'm going to get you a bottle of Bland's. Yeah, right. I got to find it somewhere. Yeah, man. right. Yeah, yeah none right. of these duty free shops. Just Duty free some, shops are another place I, that need to get I their shit together. It. I mean, whenever you stalk the liquor stores and the managers the way I do and show up <laughs> whenever the truck comes up, I, I normally have a bottle or two. What it's not just Blanton's. You gotta find the Blanton's gold label. That's what you get at okay. the duty free shop. The regular Blanton's I can find it. It's not read, readily accessible, but it's possible if you're me. Yeah. Well, both of you, you and you and Angie have had success the past couple of days at liquor stores, or in her case, Kroger right by us has um, had Athena Paradiso, which is like some rare creature comforts beer. Uh huh. I don't know if it's we're closer to Athens now, or that they would stock closer. Maybe oh, yeah. I don't know, but yeah, I've never seen it in stores. She freaked out, and wow, now you got your what do you say, Weller? Yep, Weller. Yeah, they've got three different kinds. Uh, did, There's uh, a special, the antique, and the twelve. See, I'm a Chivas man. Chivas? Chivas. Chivas. My heart is for Chivas. Okay. What did yeah. you think about Joseph's hair last night? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. What are we just doing? Yeah. You're just going to do yeah. a Brendan Dassey? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those interviews with him and his mom, I'm like, oh, that's where <laughs> that fucker gets it from. Um. Yes. The hair last night was interesting. It looked like spray paint. It looked really wispy, right? It's like a perm that didn't set. Yeah. Yeah, we were watching. Angie was super psyched. She's like, oh, color, thank God. Color I was on point with. She's like, thank God. He, he, did, that, he did the silver ragged. hair. Yeah. He looked real ragged the last couple of games. I wish he would just go like Rufio hair. From Hook? From Hook. That's a fucking dated like reference. Red, like a red mohawk type thing. Yeah. That's not coming straight to my brain, but. Oh, you got a computer right here. Why don't you pull it up, young Jamie? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going I'm to show... get the screen share figured out. Oh, yeah. So that people can see like a picture in picture. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I got you. Okay. It's almost like it's almost like feathers. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm, I'm secretly hoping for the Martinez old man haircut. The last <laughs> game, he just cut a horseshoe hair. I guess the horseshoe hair. <laughs> it's amazing. It's like that. That's that is the terminal velocity of ironic hair because you have girls that go gray on purpose yeah. because it's fashionable, and then you got right. the guys that are go. Now he's going gray to be fashionable, and then he's like, "All right, I'm going to take it one step further. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to go old man. I'm going to go horseshoe hair comb over. <laughs> he's going to get goggles to wear on the field." You're gonna tuck his jersey in. Oh my god, I would love it. it. But the into jeans. I would love like it. stonewash, no belt. He jeans. actually gets old man makeup put on. Just goes full. Uh, what was that, Graham? What was that jackass spinoff movie? Oh, oh bad grandpa. Yeah, he just goes full. Wait, bad no, grandpa. I no, I, I get the. What's the one with um, Robert De Niro? Big Daddy. 
Meet the Fockers. Yeah, that's no, no, no. There's, there's one where he's a with with Zac Efron where he's a bad grandpa. The Godfather. Naughty, naughty grandpa. The Godfather. Something like that. Yeah, The Godfather. <laughs> that's, that's what it's casino. <laughs> All right, back on, back on topic. <laughs> Uh, my my fingernails are gone. I bite my fingernails, oh, and last dude. night just destroyed them. I don't bite my fingernails. I bite the meat on the side of my fingernails, and yeah, same here. Just destroyed today. Yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do this weekend. Yeah, but I can at least breathe a little bit this weekend. I feel yeah, like that's nice going into that game. Yeah, we have a one one nil lead going into Sunday's game. Mm-hmm. We have an away goal, which is huge. We shut them out, and we did it without. Tito in the first half and without Miggy in the second half. Right. Which is huge. And I without think Tito. Arguably in- a better first half than second half. And I think you'd be hard pressed to find anybody to argue differently that the second half was any better than the first half. The first half, I don't think I don't think we could have played any better than we did in the first half. Uh we, we put a lot of opportunities on goal. Um did exactly what we wanted to. But the big so uh Back on track. Let's go to the lineup. To your point about seeing Miggy in the first half and then not in the second half. Uh, get the lineup. We find out that Miggy is healthy. It was a big question mark for everybody whether or not he'd be in this weekend if he'd be healthy. Him and Tito both, for that matter. So we get the lineup announced. No real surprises up until those front three. Or, I mean, really just the front two, whether or not Tito was going to be in and Miggy was going to be in. Well, what about Garza? Not that it was a surprise, but it was it was interesting to see him starting the game, right? I thought that was the logical well, direction no, I, I, I would know, go I in. know, but it was... Yeah. But, but still, for me, it was like seeing No, that's it, a good point. It was, oh, okay. That's a good point. Awesome, yeah. And I think it was a welcomed... Um, a welcomed positional player that we had been missing. Uh, the consistency that he lent to the attack and defensive side of the ball was really, really great to see for a full 90 minutes last night. So, yeah, no, I, I agree with you completely. It's, um, but to go back to it. Yeah. Like, like you were saying, we ended up playing all three of Lorenowitz, Nagby and Remedi to start the game and yeah. throughout the game. They didn't get subbed off. I don't think any of them, either of the, or any of the three got subbed off of the game. Um, but yeah, no Barco in the starting lineup, no Almiron in the starting lineup. No Tito in the starting lineup. So you're left with an interesting set, like kind of a mixed bag of of attacking options because you have Nagby, who's more pulled back, a little recessed from, you know, an attacking midfielder role necessarily. And he he does a great job of being able to contain the ball and all that. But um, I think that it was great to see Almiron come out there and to see him hungry on the ball. Um, just get get on the end of some things. It was... The team seemed a little rusty, maybe. Not rusty might not be the right word. They seem out of sync a little bit right now. I think on part, the offensive end, on I should the say. Offensive end, I think a lot of that was because of the field constraints. I, I genuinely believe that, especially in the second half. So it's partially the field constraints and then partial partially the positional constraints that Atlanta put on themselves in the second half. So first half, you know, I thought On the road in Yankee Stadium, that looked like the most Atlanta-looking Atlanta team that you could possibly put onto that field, where they were moving the ball forward, they were compacting and containing on defense, and they were actually distributing and creating things in the midfield the way that you'd want them to. You saw a couple of long balls up to Joseph, some quick breaks, saw a little, like all all the hits, so to speak, for Atlanta United in that first half. I think a big part of that was because Miggy was actually present and available in the midfield. So between him and Nagby, there was a lot of things happening in the midfield to help pull defenders, move the ball back and forth. And then Gressel, even though he didn't have a standout game, he was there and taking space to help be that player to move the ball forward. So between those three, I think a lot happened in the midfield in the first half that we didn't see in the second half because Tito whether it was because of his injury or just positionally, was always so far forward. It seemed like if anybody out of the two, him or Martinez, that were actually stepping up or doing anything in the midfield, it was Martinez, funnily enough. So that was a big problem for me in the second half because 
what that ended up doing was compacting us so much on the back line that it just seemed like we were parking the bus, but it was because there was really nobody. Once the ball was cleared out of the defense, which you kind of have to do against that New York team, because if not, they're going to play those one touch passes and just sort of chop you up on the back line. What we were able to do in the first half by booting the ball forward consistently and playing it into space for some 50 50 balls and having those three players in the midfield was we could distribute and then try to create some opportunities since everybody was so far forward for NYC. Second half, that kind of all falls apart. You see Tito way too far forward, Martinez in these odd spaces in the midfield, and everybody else is just sort of all over the place. Remedi, I think, gets taken out of the game relatively quickly. I mean, he, he has a couple of great plays, obviously the goal, but defensively, he doesn't overstretch or overdo too much after he gets the yellow card, and then that was the other big talking point of the entire game was all the calls that were being made. So... What that ends up leaving you in the second half is Tito who gets carted in the first 30 seconds of the half and nobody on Atlanta trying to play overly aggressive or too far forward. It does lead to a couple of opportunities with Martinez and Tito on breaks, but it wasn't lending itself to the consistency in the midfield and the distribution that the first half did because you had nobody really filling those spaces. Yeah. (laughs) And then you see Barco come in. Yes. And Barco was kind of like the in-between. If I was to rank the efficiency of that lineup based on those three player rotations that we saw, I would put Miggy up at the top, then Barco, and then Tito, in my opinion. I think Barco came in. He was hungry. He made his impact. He, I mean, he came in. He gets the ball. He takes it up the field and it gets our first free kick and uh, set piece on that side of the field. You tell me whatever the sniper took him out from the rafters? <laughs> exactly. I think he might have gotten a little clipped on the outside of the ankle. It was definitely a soft fall. Yeah. But still, you needed somebody that was going to be able to move the ball forward enough to draw that foul and get some sort of a call because the ref was going to call just about anything last night. So it was good to see something like that. Uh, because Tito just wasn't really effective, in my opinion, yeah. at the time he was in the field. I like what Joe Johnstone said, and I think I want to say it was Stu Holden that kind of put that uh, into the ether last night too. Whenever he's talking about Barco, finally, he was being a menace last night. He really was. He, he was, was chasing balls down. He was making, you know, um, he's making a problem for a lot of the guys on, on defense last night uh, and on offense, chasing down people, which is one of the things that has been kind of the one of the one of his weaknesses i guess you can say even though you don't necessarily expect that so much from an attacking midfielder that's he doesn't track back as well and he gives up on plays a lot you don't even really see that last night so yeah tail of two halves for sure you saw a lot of the overlapping runs a lot of the anticipatory like you saw balls get weighted poorly like between some of the runs that grussell was making whenever he and he and miggy were trying to be on the same track that's the field too (laughs) yes no for sure so there there are a lot of great uh there are a lot of great thoughts in terms of the runs and overlaps and things that are people were making in the first half. And and you're right. I mean, there was more buildup, which led to uh, there being less being ahead of the play, I guess. I don't know. Because what I was going to say about the second half is those instances you're talking about with Joseph and with Tito, where they are up there and they're seemingly wasting chances is because it, th- that's really optics. What you really have to look at is they're so far ahead and anticipating the, the run of play. And they were playing it so far forward so quickly that they really don't have anybody to play it to. Right. I mean, I don't blame Joseph so much for that poorly weighted pass to the inside to Tito. No, that was the right decision. It was just poor placement, and Tito had to pull back off of his run. And he, by that time, the defender had tracked back and covered the shot. Yeah, that's like that's a harder play than than you would you would probably think it was looking at it. The I, I odds were more in Tito's favor to make the goal than it was in Joseph's at that in that situation if he takes the shot. And, and it's hard to tell whether or not we were kind of forced to play that way in the second half due to the pressure that they were placing on us or what. But uh, I'm, I, don't, I don't know if we're trying to conserve that lead, conserve that clean sheet in the second half too much. It's really hard to tell. We did have a more defensive lineup going in, you know, well, for the remainder of the second half. Definitely did a lot of time wasting too. Something that Tata has talked about on multiple occasions, wanting to employ more of, especially against teams that have found success in doing that to Atlanta. When Atlanta wants to move the ball forward, you saw Atlanta kind of do the flip side of that last night, where they were able to control the mentality of the game, not get too aggressive, not get too inside their own heads and having that lead in the second half, we're able to sort of force the opposite of that 
on NYC where they were getting really frustrated. They couldn't play at the pace that they wanted to. They couldn't build up from the midfield with their one-touch passes like they've consistently been able to do on that field because of the calls that the ref was making, because of Atlanta wasting time, whatever it may have been. Atlanta really dominated the second half in a different way than they did in the first half. It was sort of the mental game and the chess match of how to play clock and time in the second half more so than it was in the first half. But that first half team was an Atlanta team that I've been dying to see. I mean, from the time that first whistle blew, it was like they were on uh, ready for the 100-meter sprint or whatever. I mean, they they just took off for the ball, and it was relentless the entire first half. It, there wasn't a time that the ball was played where there wasn't an Atlanta player in space to try to step up and uh, make a play. And honestly, one of my favorite, and I wish that somebody would post or find it, and I, I want to go back and maybe even make a GIF of it, but in about the 46th minute in the first half was probably one of my favorite link-up plays that I've seen all season for a span of about 30 seconds between uh, Miggy, Garza, and I want to say Nagby, and it was at the top left hand, of, uh, the top left side of the pitch, and it was just a bunch of tiki taka passes and one touches, and it ends up with like a back heel from Miggy to Garza making the run on the left wing. It was just a great fucking setup play that ultimately almost leads to I think that was Escobar that was tracking in for a shot, but it was just a great series of events that even though it didn't transpire in a goal, it was. It was a really, really great thing to see that was sort of a punctuation mark on the rest of the first half up to that point. Yeah. I I know we've waxed poetic about who George Bellow is and what he's done playing on this team, but I really, I must say, I was taken aback by how much I missed Greg Garza out on the field. I thought that he played he played well last night. He was stable. Um, he didn't really make any glaringly obvious mistakes. He was, like you said, he was good in attack. Um a lot of interweaving play in that, in that, and which you miss from him because you don't get that with Chris McCann. No, you get it with George Bello, but not at the same clip, I guess. It right. There is this team, however, has put me in a position where anytime somebody takes a fall, of which there were many last night, I'm I'm just waiting to see if they're going to get up because there's so many players that ha- are coming back from injuries, and this is the first time we've seen almost an entirely healthy Atlanta United lineup yeah. in a long time. Uh, that's not injuries or weird uh, team suspensions because of off-field activities, <laughs> whatever it may be. He was be. just doing math, man. He was dividing yeah. zero by one. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, man, it's just been really great to see. And and something that um, Kisto mentions – is it Kisto? I can't see it from here. Or Kisito. Ki- Kisito. Uh, mentions is nobody's talking about Nagby. That's one of those players that we missed for a long stretch of time there where uh, Remedi came in and was playing and Nagby had the injury and we didn't see him for a while. And I think right now he's playing his best football for Atlanta. And last night showed why Tata went with that lineup. And, and seeing him in the midfield consistently getting the ball and making those transitions to play it off with a one-two with Miggy or moving over to the left side to link up with guards or moving over to the right side to link up with Gressel, consistently creating opportunities and chances to distribute out of the midfield, which was really, really nice to see. Not just that, it's composure. It's, it's one of those things where you see how much veteran leadership on this team last night between him Garza, Lorenowitz, Parkhurst. I mean, LGP at this point, just cool, calm, collected heads that are able to play. I mean, I could think of a couple times in the backfield where where LGP kind of ushered some some balls out of there in like kind of a calm fashion that could have you know been calamitous for yeah. um, for the wrong player. And can we talk about the refereeing? I know we said a long time ago on the show we don't like to harp on. I'm refereeing. not going to blame it or put any result one way or the other on the officiating, but last night was fucking ridiculous. The, the referee did dictate the run of play last night or the pace of play very early on. It's it's we say this all the time. It's probably been a while now because we don't talk about refereeing all that much anymore. But the referee should be as objective as possible even though we know there's a lot of subjectivity that goes into these play calls. You know, not everything is offside. Not everything is a... Right. Um, even when it comes to handballs, there's subjectivity involved a lot of the time. The problem, 
or the, the thing that is always placed in the hands of the referee is kind of this old thing that you and I used to talk about is um, play within your own box. So like if you're going to set the rules for yourself and you're going to set the tone of play, make sure that you don't go outside of that. And unfortunately, we've got like a really overly uh, aggressive, zealous referee last night who really wanted to kind of have a stranglehold on the game. And we see that in a couple ways where you can either see them letting play run too often or in this case, calling everything. And, and then as a result of that, you have bad calls with. Uh, some of the yellow cards, some of the non-calls, and this goes for both sides. Oh, absolutely. The the red card, the lack of card whatsoever for David Villa, let alone a red card for a high boot to the back, yeah. is is pretty egregious to me. But but what you also get with that is what's unfortunate is a lot of these players, they come up most likely in a system, especially like outside of America, they come up in the system where you get hit, you go down, right? And in last night's case, you had a referee who was kind of feeding into that mentality and who was enabling them, enabling those little bratty children to come out in them. That's exactly it. So that it, it sucks, right? I mean, uh, referees have a tough job. I'm not going to slight them in the least, but this guy kind of tried to make a, a spectacle and tried to kind of, like I said, get a stranglehold on this game and put his own signature on it. The in, in most, a way. The, the most uh, penalties called or fouls called in the first half of a game all season. What was it, 30-something, right? Something like that. It was, it was pretty absurd. So the, pro the reason why that's a problem is, to your point about playing within the rules, he comes out and throws a very early yellow on Remetti as if to gesture... He's not going to tolerate fouls or um, overly aggressive plays. And then he goes almost the entire half without throwing the subsequent cards against NYC. And then you see the same thing happen in the second half. So it's almost like he used the card as if to mandate that he is going to continue to do so to stop that play, but then allows like, he just keeps calling the fouls over and over and over without any sort of, uh, reprimanding of the players versus what you want to see officials do is call the fouls early. Let them know, let them know. Yeah. And then use your cards to maintain that, that manner of control. But whenever you come out swinging that early and you're not going to consistently be throwing those cards, it just, like you said, it feeds into those mentalities of those players on both sides of the ball. We saw Miggy do it. Miggy so much so that he takes the fall and looks up at the ref immediately and starts smiling because that's what they have been incentivized to do at that point because either he's going to call it or he's going to throw a card. You don't know which one it's going to be, but more times than not, he's at least going to blow the whistle. and. um yeah, it was just unfortunate because while Atlanta seemed to be on the better half of that because we got the win and the only goal that NYC really put in with the bike from Via ends up getting called back because of the high kick, high, uh, high, kick. High, <laughs> high, high kick, high kick, rightfully so. Um, props to Joseph, by the way, for putting himself into the line of fire there. Yeah, no kidding. Um, <laughs> I, I like what Bill Holcomb is saying. Kevin is too sober. He's making coherent arguments. <laughs> And uh, it's the new studio. I got yeah, a lot to live up Pat to. Patrick's don't worry. It'll, it'll quickly go downhill. Yeah. We need a, we need to get a pen in here or something. Um, yeah, it's interesting to see we'll, we'll be in the studio one more time and then we're going to be broadcasting from my couch, I guess. Oh no, let's just do it from your bed with me high on Vicodin. Let's do it from your bed. Or not Vicodin, Percocet. Can we do yeah. that? Like we'll just lay in your bed and just have, <laughs> the, have the GoPro pointed down on it. <laughs> so it'll be, we'll, we'll call it pillow talk. Yeah, it'll, it'll be like an OK Go video. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, it, it'll pan around the room. You see Angie in the closet with a drum set. Just <laughs> <laughs> confetti. <laughs> Pirola just keeps stepping up, stepping up and down <laughs> off of the pedestal after dark. Oh, so, man. yeah, I, I'm not just I'm not saying the referee made a lot of bad calls. I think he just set the tone. He did. He, he, was he, just, he, he set a bad tone that really didn't allow for a whole lot of fluidity for the game or it wasn't in the sustainable. Game. No, it wasn't sustainable at all. He definitely set the bar a bit off more than he can chew, but your thoughts on we we've seen this a lot less this year than we did last year with the introduction of VAR goals getting rescinded from the run of play. 
Um, I just, I have a really hard time with it. Oh, you mean the talking the about the Mickey Mi- goal? The Mickey goal wasn't called. Mickey the- goal should have been allowed to stand just on looks alone. Yes, <laughs> because if you're gonna do that, who gives a shit? Because look at it. Because look at it. Nobody got hurt. That's the only reason why you bring back David Villa's goal. David Villa's goal, if it goes in and Martinez isn't there, but Martinez is kind of close, then eh, let it go. Miggy's goal, nobody got hurt. He was that close. I didn't see definitive proof he was really offsides. No, uh, no, it was the the lead up. It was the I know the rollback off of the corner. I know no, it wasn't. I know what it, it wasn't was. Jeff. It, it yeah. was him. It, I know. I know it wasn't Jeff. It was the playoff of Gressel to Miggy. Oh, but there's he, a player inside the box that is almost keeping him onside for that play. Just let it stay, man. Just let it stay. No, I mean, I agree with you, th- th- but that's my, that's my whole thing is like, how, how long before the goal was that play? I mean, it was at least what, 15 seconds, 20 seconds right. before. Right. It just, the linesman didn't even, he did not And that's the, that's the thing is like, it's, it's a double edged sword, right? Because in some ways you expect a linesman to be able to make that call immediately, but then you also know that the word from up, up on high is if it's close, don't call it. We'll get it in the VAR. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's rough. It, was, it, was, it sucked really bad to get that goal called back. It did. But I very much liked and appreciated the response from everybody on the team, including Tata on the sideline. Whenever they called it back, all of them just pointed at each other. It's like, who cares? Let's just play. Like, let, Let's not let it interfere with our mentality. Let's keep doing what we're doing. We're... We're clearly creating opportunities. It's okay. Let's let's not let that missed opportunity define us. And that came up huge because just 30 seconds later, they concede a corner kick to NYC where they have to almost do the opposite yeah. and really step and up and make head, a play. Keep your head and in the if game. you don't in that moment, you easily concede a goal and you're down 1-0 um, and have the inverse of what happened against uh, RSL, where you go from being down four two and then winning it four four three mean, uh, or whatever. San Jose, San Jose, yeah. yeah. I was <laughs> you gonna go say, from being up one nil to being down one nil. So to Magda's point, she says, "Isn't every goal VAR, which is what saved us in San Jose?" That's very true. I mean, every goal is VAR. But my thing is like, how far back in the play do you go? Especially whenever there's a play that should be easily called by the lines, the the linesman. Um, I don't know. I guess it's it's just disappointing, but at the same time, we get the W. Like you said, players get their head back into the game. They defend uh, on the come up. Inter- Mike, Michael cool. Miranda. What up, homie? Que pasa, muchacho? Interesting topic from uh, PK in the uh, from Patrick in the uh, trap. Is it too early to ask who's going to replace Parky next year? And I think that's a a two sided discussion. Who could replace him as captain and who's going to replace him positionally? Positionally, I think that Franco Escobar will replace him. Really? I do. I think he's more suited. I think he is for that role. I think he's. Who do you add to the defense at that point? I think we can find a right back or from that standpoint. It, it, it's it's so tough, right? It's it's tough because Tata's not going to be the manager going in. We, I know it's too early, but why not, guys? Come on. Just let him finish. I was going to say, you don't know who the coach is going to be. So you don't know what formation they're going to employ. That's it could point. be a three-five-two, in which case we could see a, a solid back three of LGP, um, Franco Escobar, and then Miles Robinson. Right. So, so even though it may be too early in regards to the conversation, because we don't know if Parky's going to be here or not. One thing that we do know is Tata's not going to be here, and you mentioned a good point. We don't know what the formation is going to be next year. Either way, what's your stance on that? If you come into an organization that's successful, every coach wants to put their stamp on it and mold a yeah. team in their image. What do you do if you come in and take? So let's say wishful thinking, hopeful thinking, Atlanta goes on to win the cup this year. We know we're getting a new coach next year. Do you come in and try to? Uh, impose your will on the uh, the offense and on the structure to recreate the formation structure and how that team is structured internally? 
or do you allow it to maintain and make minor tweaks to slowly change it into something over time? Leave it to an architect to use the word structure four times in one sentence. I realized I said it, and by the last time I wanted to just gag myself. Uh, I am of the mindset that I would prefer the former rather than the latter because there's going to be a lot of turnover going into next year. So you're going to have Tata's gone, obviously. You have the potential that Larry's gone, that Parkhurst is gone, Miggy is gone. Uh, I think we've all conceded that at this point. The West Ham rumors most likely are true. Um, and then Joseph may be gone, may, may not be gone. You don't know. There's going to be a completely different makeup of this team. And I think it is important for the manager coming in to not be too relaxed. I think that they should come in and, and try to mold the team in, in his image. That said, I don't think that the front office and, and ownership are going to veer that far off of the course to bring somebody in that is not, or that yeah, that is not similar in style to Tata Martino. So Kevin's got a great point. Uh, I don't think Darren's going to yeah, allow that. Exactly. He says he yeah. wants the philosophy and the way we play to stay the same. That's why we've been taking Tata's suggestions for the head coach or for the next coach. That's a great. Uh, that's a great point, Kevin. I'm also sorry about your foot. I hope you feel better. I'm sorry I stepped on it last week at Station Soccer. I need you to be healthy for this week's game. If you guys are interested, playing a pickup out at Station Soccer at Five Point oh, Station on Wednesday nights, it's 7 to 10 tempting. p.m. Come on out. I got some new boots. Ooh. These boots were made for stomping. And that's Just what they'll do. Kevin. Yeah, yeah, Kevin Brown. Living, breathing testament to that. That's true. Power Rangers do heal quickly. That was so much fun fucking fun last week we all went out last week's pickup game last wednesday was on halloween so we all got the matching power rangers t-shirts and went out there and played it was it was, was a lot of i fun. was pretty jealous of it it was, it was a lot awesome. of fun a lot of fun uh takeaways from the game you know what's funny is if you pull up on who scored and you look at the the key weaknesses of both teams both of them one of the weaknesses avoiding fouling in dangerous areas <laughs> <laughs> it just shows it goes to show i mean there was just myriad fouls all over the field Again, just kind of chippiness, choppiness, no fluidity to the game. It was very nice to see Eric Rometty pull that goal in, though. One of the interesting things under NYCFC's weaknesses, uh, based on who scored um, breakdown, defending against skillful players. They have two defenders sitting on a yellow card right now. Coming into a game where they have to be overly aggressive, because they have to put up that many more goals. I think that plays directly into Atlanta's success coming back to the bins this weekend. Um, yeah, I'm with you on that. To that same point, Atlanta's in a weird position too with Rometty sitting on that one that was costly. So, I mean, is, so is early, accumulation, Joseph, I'm less worried about. Is accumulation chopped? Like, is it gone and then we start over in the playoffs? I believe so. And is it two consecutive games or something like that? You end up with a suspension. How does that work? I mean, what's the? Uh, I don't. I don't know. But we ended up. Yeah. I mean, Alex Ring got a yellow card, and he was the only one from their defense that had a yellow. I they mean, they were he's already a sitting on a yellow. Gosh. Okay. There's I guess, a couple players already. I guess. Setting on I guess a accumulation yellow. doesn't. I think Chino and Collins. Collins maybe were sitting on yellows going into this game. Yeah, so. it's true. But to Bill's point, they can't be cautious or they can't be worried about yellow card accumulation. At oh, this I point. guess that makes sense because if they, if, yeah, especially for NYC, that makes total sense because if they get yellow card accumulation, it doesn't really matter if they lose the game and they're not playing. And to Michael's game. point, really and to Michael way. Miranda's point, he said, if you make it to the conference playoffs or conference championship game, they get it. They reset. Yeah, gotcha. they reset. Well, then let's take the flip side of that then. You're right. Uh, who was that that said they can't be or Bill. You're right. They can't be worried about yellow card accumulation. So I would think Atlanta would be more concerned about it because Atlanta, it's not a done deal. I don't want to tempt the fate gods and say that Atlanta comes out and wins handily this weekend or anything like that. I think it's a very tough game. It has a very tough opponent. Anything can happen. The odds, however, 
are in our favor, statistically speaking. That, statistically. That Atlanta potentially advances into the semifinals. So m- mentally, how does Tata start to look at this lineup knowing that you've got a more defensive midfielder sitting on one yellow card? It doesn't matter. If we get to the Eastern Conference Championships, it gets, it gets uh, reset. Oh. The conference. Oh, I thought he said the final. No. Oh, conference championships. I'm yeah. dumb. Yeah, he's real dumb. No, see, Joe Johnstone says finals. Well, come on, guys. <sighs> come on, guys. You're letting us down. Which way? Know. Which way is it? It resets. When? When does it reset? Is it reset for the semis or in the championship? What's in the box? I want to know. What's in the box? Anyway. Interesting matchup coming into this weekend. We're back home. What changes do you think we'll see out of both teams? I think we see Miguel Almiron fully match fit. I think we see him both halves, if not 70, 75 minutes worth of play. Do you see any changes to the lineup going into this weekend? Mm, that's tough. I mean... I think let me answer let me answer both my question that I posed previously and the one I just posed. I think that the most obvious substitution comes with Remedi having the injury that he got this past week or, or yeah, this past yesterday, I guess against NYC. Him getting the injury, a healthy Miggy depends on Tito's injury. I don't it seemed like he was kind of struggling a little bit. If he's match fit and ready to go on Sunday, I think that's your substitution. You take Remedi out, you put Miggy and Tito both in starting out the gate, and then you just take Remedi Start, off. Oh, interesting. So you're saying, who starts on the bench then? Remedi? Is what you're saying? Yeah, I'm saying Remedi would be on the bench. He'd be in the 18, but oh. not necessarily in the 11. Yeah, because I guess if you want to deploy Nagby a little far further back, he and, he and Jeff can really kind of anchor that midfield and yep. give kind of a shield because we yep. would be attacking a lot more. I, I don't mind that at all. Yep. I do like how remedi has been playing. I think that the game last night that he had was pretty um, was pretty outstanding. I'm not just setting him because of the thumb bill. I just think if if Tito's healthy, so that's maybe we'll pose it that way. It's not just because of the thumb. I think it's because of the pump, thumb, because of the yellow card, and because you have a healthy Tito. So let's just let's take out the thumb. Let's take out the yellow card. Let's just talk about skill set out of Tito. And Remedi, if Tito's match fit and match ready, knowing that Miggy's going to be in the lineup, who gives you more out of that starting 11, Tito <sighs> or Remedi? That's what's tough, right? I mean, uh, do, do you think that we play to, to hold on to that 1-0 lead? Do you I, think- I don't know. So to, Joe, to Joe's point, he doesn't seem 100%. While I agree with that, I don't know if that's just because of the situation that he was brought into in the game and that field or if he's really not ready. Right, his breakaway speed did not seem to be there last night. That's true. I mean, I don't know. It's it's match fitness, right? Uh, that's I think that's the main thing to take away from it. <laughs> <laughs> Thick fielder gets to play. I, I'm kind of in the same mindset. I think I would rather see Tito come off the bench if we need him as an option to score a goal. Because I think we can control the game, still score a goal, and then keep NYCFC out of the net. I'm, I'm happy either way. I, j- I just don't know definitively one way or the other where Tito's at right now. Yeah. I don't know either. And then Barco's kind of the odd man out too. So if we're going to make the point, so the other side of that would be if we're going to make the argument that Tito's not really match ready or he's having an injury and not playing up to a hundred percent. I'm of the mindset that I think you swap out their rotation in the lineup. If during your substitutions, after the half, if Atlanta's in a position to put this thing away and you bring Barco in prior to bringing in Tito. Because based off of what I saw in that game, yeah. I thought Barco was far more efficient on the ball and in space he's much more than of a Tito threat. was. Yeah, he's definitely much more of a threat. I would say Tito did better getting into positions to get breakaways. He just didn't seem to have that speed last night. Jimmy Vance. What up, dude? It's been a while. Uh he said, uh, what's up, boys? Miggy up top with Joseph, Remedi in the midfield to solidify the midfield. I'm, I'm with that. I agree. I think, I think that's what we see. I don't think it's a bad... I, I'm, I wanted to just play devil's advocate more than anything. 
I, I want to say Franco Escobar, I thought played well, aside from that miss that he had, I thought that he was pretty great last night. Dude, he looked so fast on the ball. Yeah, last he did. Night. It, some of the, the, A couple the of those breakaway- breakaways he yeah. had on the right line were fucking fantastic. Yeah. I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. I mean, our whole defense, uh, I felt like played really well. And I think that's that's a good sign. I'd rather our defense be firing right now going into Sunday's game than having to worry about having Swiss cheese in the backfield. Yeah. And I, it, I thought, I, I think you stay with the four back. I don't think you mess with no, that no, no, whatsoever no. Yeah, we won't right see now. A three back, yeah. Not, no. not against NYC. There's no reason to. I think that th- I would argue that you don't need to go to a three back unless you're in a position that you need to make up goals and bring something back in the second leg of either of the next two series that you have. Yeah. Because you have a four back that you know you can depend on and you're playing teams that you know can score goals. The four back that we have right now is fluid and dynamic enough that they're playing four back when they need to and playing three back when they need to as well. So I think that you stay with that four back throughout the remainder of the playoffs. And if and honestly, if we stay with the lineup as it's as it stands currently that we trotted out against NYC, I'm totally fine with that too. We've talked nonstop about the whole I mean, it's been two years now. Tito versus Gressel. Last night, I think I think we played really well with Tito coming in, and I've said it consistently over the past year at least that I really, really like the intensity that Tito brings in as a sub outside of last night. Yeah. Last night, I just felt like it just it seemed out of place. I don't know if it was because of the field, if it was because of his health, whatever it was, Tito just seemed out of, out of place with the strategy that was set forth in the first half, and it might have just been an entire team support system that was lacking in that second half for him to be able to do what he wanted to do. No, I mean... Uh, I think I think we're in agreement on that. I think that Tito is going to be a a power substitution. I, I think uh, Jeb Hart. I, I like what he said there. He says we play better on the road because teams open up at home. He says with a goal lead, they're going to open up again coming in here. Uh, we don't need to change a thing. I I agree with that. I think that we can control the game, and I, I think that we can win another one nil result. I think that's going to be. I think that will probably instill us with more confidence going into the Eastern Conference Finals to get another clean sheet or to control a game, to keep them out of the net, period, and win either go 0-0 or win one nothing. I don't think this game is low scoring. I think it goes... They're going to throw I, caution I, to the I, wind. Well, yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's a low scoring game for Atlanta. Let me put it that way. I think it is a low, uh, a low scoring margin of vit- victory if NYC gets an early goal yeah. and Atlanta has to play back into it. But if Atlanta comes out, scores first, they've ultimately got a two-goal lead at that point based on aggregate with the away game. I think they bury this thing. And, and NYC over stretches and tries to come up with something, and it just plays into the hands of Atlanta, and we may end up coming out with something really big. It, I think it, the timing of that first goal and who scores it is really critical in this game. And if Atlanta can manage to come out like they did – on the road against NYC and score something really early, I think this thing could get out of hand really quick for NYC. Yeah. I saw people saying in the in the trap earlier, maybe arguing that Sean Johnson gave away that goal or he could have got to that goal that, that Rometty got. I don't think that's the case at all. And I think that Sean Johnson helped them keep uh, the, the the score much lower. That goal, the Dude, Greg Garza. The Greg Garza rip? Oh, yes. my God. Yeah. Oh, uh, my God. I really felt for Garza in that moment where Sean Johnson was able to stretch and hit that uh, top corner wow. strike. Yeah. Wow. What a, I mean, talk about a welcome return to form to get Greg Garza yeah. in there to take that volley and put it on frame the way he did. That was a fucking sight to see. That was really great. No, I agree with you completely. So a couple things. Are, are we done with this game, I guess? Yeah. MLS playoffs this weekend, this past week, really, if with the first round. Columbus robs uh, Red Bulls. And on not, the not just or that. They were at home. Sorry. Not just yeah. that, but they went on uh, They went on the road in D.C. and took down a really hot D.C. United team. Uh, won nothing, right? Got a, and, uh, it came or no, of, P.K., it sorry. Came it was, yeah, got a feel right. for Yamil there. I mean, being on the losing end of a first-round knockout 
against the same team in the same manner in PKs. Yeah. I mean, uh, to somebody's point, I can't remember who was, uh, you guys were, you were tweeting about Sorry, that. Sorry, guys. Show I kind of went off on the <laughs> show page that <laughs> night. <laughs> it was interesting. I can't remember who said it, that little tidbit about how Yamil Assad has been on or been involved in two of the three games in MLS playoff history that have gone down to PKs. Is that right? Something? Yeah, I said that. Yeah. Okay. You said yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Two of the three, and two of them were to the same team in back-to-back years in PKs. Yes. Um, But somebody else tweeted something. It was like, Columbus beats Atlanta and then goes on to beat D.C. both in their new stadium story. Uh, Moral of the story, don't allow Columbus to play a knockout round in your new stadium. (laughs) (laughs) Should be interesting to see how they play next year in their new stadium whenever they're in a new city. (laughs) So next year is the year after, I forget. Year after, but they're still in Columbus. I we don't know yet. We, we really, really don't know. Um, no, right? Because if it works out the way that like San Jose moving to Houston did, it'll be San. It'll be Columbus and their personnel and that franchise moving down to Austin, I believe, and then the ownership from the Browns starting up a new franchise that's called Columbus Crew. Yeah. Which is very strange. I uh, I like what PK said and Patrick saying uh, giving away giving Sean Johnson away is still our greatest personnel mistake. He's a Atlanta boy too, so <laughs> giving him a yeah he's a he's a hell of a goalkeeper. But also Jeb Hart, Steph, uh, Zach Stefan screwed us in the playoffs last year and this year that might or that save that he had at the end of the game to deny yeah. Bradley Wright Phillips. I think it was at the end of the game might save our asses. Yeah. So yeah, some some interesting results. Um, it, we haven't recorded since really since decision day, and a couple things to note. Like I was very shocked, but not really. Like I was actually no. I take that back. I wasn't shocked. I was disappointed that Zlatan didn't make it into the playoffs because that team collapsed. They had a two goal lead going in. It would have been fun to see them. But some of these, it, it, and it's hard. It's hard in the West because of how tight everything is to really call one thing or another upset. But you see the lower seeds. I think one. Both first round games where you had RSL winning against LAFC and then you had Portland beating Dallas. Yep. So you had the five beating the four and then you had the six beating three and then going in and then you have two where they both won one results yesterday where you had RSL Albert Rusnak's goal so far the, the goals yeah, I was seen, one one last night. And oh, it was two one Portland over Seattle, right? And Seattle being the two seed, even though they were down in the dumps in the beginning of, or the half right. halfway through the season before Clint Dempsey decided to hang him up, and they got Rui Diaz and decided to start playing soccer. Um, Albert Rusnak's goal. Did you see that last two one Portland for RSL? Did I say Seattle? I think so. Sorry, I meant Portland. Yeah. Um, Did I see Rusnak's goal? No. Rusnak's goal for RSL last night. Mm-hmm. Ooh boy. I didn't. The hell of a strike from the top of the box. It was a, it was a good goal, but again, I mean, how tight that is. I mean, looking at RSL drawing against SKC, but really, what that'll end up being is SKC got an away goal in the first round or first first match, and then they're going to go home. They're going to be able to get a goal. Probably, I think they'll put away RSL. I think they'll put them to bed because I think SKC are still the best team in the in the West. But the, that Portland Seattle rivalry, yeah, the fact that that's going on. And then both teams are kind of playing up and down soccer all year long. And, and now Seattle is surging and then Portland is kind of taking them back. But they again, they got an away or yeah, they got an away goal going down into Portland. The East is crazy. It is. And it brings up an interesting question right now is do you want the shot at redemption against Red Bulls or do you want the easy out against or conceivably the easy out against a team that you know that you can beat with Columbus because up until now we didn't know we could beat NYC, right? Yeah, but I'd rather the shot at actual redemption because those regular season games don't mean a whole lot when it comes to New York Red Bulls in my eyes. Okay. What means more is that game last year where Columbus See, took us inter- out of the that's playoffs. That's a really interesting point that I don't think a lot of people are thinking about. It's it's that it's Columbus and we, we've we proven that we can beat them and nobody wants to play Red Bulls and all the things we've heard before. But that's a, that's a line that I hadn't heard of, which is that it would be true playoff redemption for Atlanta to yeah, take out sure. Columbus. I, I want that matchup. For a couple reasons, that and I think it's an easier, I think it's an easier match for us to maintain. I mean, then we have a bugaboo with New York Red Bulls, and we, I'd rather shake that monkey off of our backs in the middle of the season as opposed to in the, trying to do it in the playoffs. And 
I very much want that Columbus game, even though they are a hell of a playoff team. They definitely are. It's weird because they played their how worst do you, how going do you into want the, the playoffs. redemption. Do you want it to come down to PKs and the Beal? What about no, that shit? Would no. that be some shit though? Yeah. <laughs> I would puke all over the place. <laughs> Just so much vomit. <laughs> uh yeah. <laughs> oh god, it would um everybody else is pretty much saying the same thing. I want the crew. Give me the crew. I want the crew. Give me the crew. Do we see New York Red Bulls bounce back against them going back over to to New Jersey? I think you do. Yeah. I think I think it would be interesting to see what would be really interesting is if Columbus finds a way to go to PKs and win it again against Red Bulls. Oh, yeah. Because Red, be Bulls, Red Bulls definitely are a team that could put away multiple goals yeah. to bring it back. Pretty much the, the only scenario that that happens is Red Bulls have to win 1-0 and then go through overtime and then go to, to PKs. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's the only scenario that I think would cause that at this point. Um. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I mean, I'm with well, all of you two, guys two, for two, all one. the same yeah. reasons. I mean, I think a matchup against the crew sounds pretty fucking great to me. Yeah, I mean, we also have the international break. Oh, I know. Up. We'll have the we'll have the week break in between or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, which will be nice. It will be. Well, we gotta we have to get past NYCFC on Sunday. Yeah, we have to show up. I'm guessing just like last year. Stadium's open completely. Not the roof. The, 72. the stands. Yeah. yeah. Um, score prediction? 3-1 Atlanta. Yeah. I think it's been a while. It seems like that we, since we've put that many goals on the, the map or on the, on the score sheet, and I think that the guys will be itching to do that at home. I'm going to say... Uh, I'm going to say 1-1 one, one. that Red Bulls come out, score one. You mean NYCFC? What did I say? Red Bulls? Yeah. yeah. NYCFC comes out, scores one. Atlanta brings it back, scores, and then wins on aggregate. All right. We got a 1-1 one, one Atlanta winning, I guess. Oh, or not winning, but Patrick, winning. Patrick, me the, and you. I like it. 1-1 one, one Atlanta winning on aggregate. Bill Holcomb, 14-2 to two Atlanta. <laughs> Jack Stokes, three to one Atlanta. Uh Brittany S two nil Atlanta. Four one Atlanta from LA Beaven. Um, think Tata gets a brace. And then stuck twenty eleven, two to one. <laughs> so everybody, I want to make sure it happens. Uh Bill mentioned it uh on Twitter. I think we retweeted it in, in solidarity. Yes. Everybody needs to show up to every home playoff match. Once you get in that stadium, it's nice and warm and cozy. Everybody's going to have to wear a hoodie or a coat or something because it's going to be cold. As soon as we get in that stadium, you pop it off, drape it over the shoulders, tie it in a front knot, and uh, yeah, good guys always win. Good guys always win. A couple more score predictions. Michael Miranda of Siempre United, 4-1 to one Atlanta. Bill Holcomb with a real prediction of 2-0. Richard Gordon, 2-1 Atlanta. And then Jeff Hart, 3-1 Atlanta. Um, who all's going to be there? Everybody with the score predictions. I know we'll be there. Yeah, we will Games be. Games at five. It's yeah. been announced. So I'm assuming no Domer or anybody from TL in the trap. I'm assuming Elder Trees let me down lately, but they started tweeting some stuff out recently. I know Trinidad and his wife had a baby, so maybe they'll have a tailgate out there but typically all the supporter group tailgates start about four hours before kick so i would assume somewhere around that 12 to one o'clock time frame on sunday not sure what the weather's going to be like yet but we'll be out there should be a great time i guess we'll say i guess we'll see um bill holcomb asking for the bar inside i like I guess it. in the main atrium pre-game drinks i like it i like the pre-game drinks that's a good call Especially if you get there. So anybody that wants to get together, if we haven't <laughs> met you, let's just make a game plan for it. We always try to get ahead of the march anyway because we're not the marchers. So why don't we just make a plan? March comes in an hour before. So we'll just plan to meet inside in the atrium at 4 o'clock. 
meet up with the homies. Anybody wants to hang out, grab one of those beers from that super sweet selection right there in the atrium, hang out, shoot the shit for a little while before going to the seats. Sounds great. Yeah. Sounds good to me. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming they'll have some of the other games on, right? Yeah. Jack Stokes saying resurgence starts their tailgate at noon. Yeah. So boys are doing it this weekend and yeah. the girls boy colloquial I have, right. I have no doubt boys and girls and all those involved will be there okay and doing the damn thing on sunday early <sighs> any other housekeeping uh shirts merch hats that get this, get this. home before dark.com forward slash shop shirts hats this and that's get home before dark forward slash shop check out dan no, I don't. Where? At DNJMS. Has anybody seen him? If you guys know. have seen Dan, let us know. Might have Megan. Kind of worried about him. Hashtag making a murderer season three. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The interrogation is going to be through home before dark. Yeah. <laughs> what did you the do to him, What did you do to him, Tim? What now? We know. Nonetheless, what know. did you do? <laughs> We know you shot him, Tim. Where did you shoot him? Where did you shoot him, Tim? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'd be remiss if I told you I shot him in the head. I shot him in the chest. <laughs> um. Yeah. Ooh, glow in the dark edition. We're going to make that happen? Turn off the lights in here and get like... Uh, wow, wow, wow. Get some EDM costumes. That'd be pretty sweet. We gotta think of some fun shows. We gotta, we gotta all of our. I know the season is far from over, but we gotta start planning all of our end of the year content. We got a couple of fun things planned. I was actually thinking yesterday or a couple of days ago, we opened up the season talking about everything that we wanted to do this this year and all the fun stuff we had planned for the show and for people that enjoy black the show. lights would be way too revealing jack those, those are not going up in here <laughs> you but i will what happens in here i will not be held that responsible. was, not part, we, that was we, not part of the home inspection <laughs> you definitely don't want to find out true <laughs> we moved here a week ago i'm not i'm not subjecting myself to that yet we're not ready for that but uh yeah i was thinking about all the stuff that we talked about that we wanted to do this year and then just kind of started taking a mental inventory of everything that we've done this season for for the show and it's yeah, sorry been, it's been a little inconsistent guys that we've missed a few weeks more than we'd like to but overall man we've done a ton yeah. i mean we we record every week but all the you know we did some live shows we did the soccer in the streets fundraising doing this pickup stuff doing the fifa tournament got the merch stuff got it's been a fun season yeah <laughs> forget about the fifa tournament that was funny shit. like i said yeah. i mean it's just we've done a ton of stuff this year so we got a lot we're gonna more make absorbed. another one of those happen yeah definitely definitely yeah you got a house got engaged yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> dan had another baby he did it's been crazy we it's, had, it's been lit fam had the Champions right? League, had the we had the uh mls all-star game event yeah yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's been it's been a fun season. And it's we still got another five more episodes, is that right? The th four? Five. Um, five games. Because there's four games, so five episodes left. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't even say it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> So anyway, it's been, it, what's the, is it, is it still lit or is it live now? Like it's live fam. Like, fa and is it fam or is it famo or is it bruv? Bruv. Bruv. I always go to bruv. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I always go to bruv. <laughs> bruv and woot with zeros for O's. Yeah. Oh, just one woot? Yeah. Back in my day, it was two woots. No. Nah. Like you get some sweet, you get some fat loot playing EverQuest. Yeah. And you use a woot woot and shout. And the yeah. and red shows up for everybody on the server. So I, some other people that uh, my buddy JP, you know JP and Eric, we've been playing Pokemon Go. I got back into it again. Yeah, your and, bu your uh, buddy JP. <laughs> like I'm not friends with the guy. <laughs> I was saying my buddy JP to the listeners, not to you. And I said, you know JP. Uh, a lot of the way that some of that stuff's organized is through Discord, which I never really used. Oh yeah, I didn't realize that the. Uh, 
I don't know what the internet term is. Like, what do you call .com or .gov or whatever? Is that what like what's the term for what that appendage? An extension. Is? The extension. Yeah, the, or a domain. I love that. The or not, di- we think it's a domain extension. Yeah. The, the Discord domain extension is .gg. Oh, and is it? Really? I got a fucking. I was cracking up, and they don't play games or anything like that, so I had to explain to them yeah. that it was a good game, and they're like, "Oh, I, I don't know, really." <laughs> That's so disappointing. <laughs> Uh yeah, Famo. Have, have you got a Famo that was maybe that's like New York hip hop from the nineties? I don't know. Ooh, Kevin has a personality on the dark web. Is that what we're learning? Woo woo. You find me at the architect everywhere. No, it's anywhere the, and the everywhere. The bearded one. The bearded one. But you can't really find I can't find a cool way to spell that. That would be like Internet 1.0 way of spelling that. The <laughs> underscore B3. 4RD. <laughs> 3D e- Doritos.com. How about those 3D bugles that they had? It's Quote unquote bugles. 3D in Spain, they had the bugles. This is a 3D bugles. It's like, I don't think they've ever made a 2D bugles. What would that be like? That would just be a Dorito. No. Because it would just be a triangle. That's true. It's not a cone. Or like those cheese triangles in the Chex Mix. Oh, those are those are good. They get a little dry sometimes. Yeah, especially if you get one of them underneath your Ooh, tongue. Get those Asian rice crackers though, like that snack mix from Kroger that comes from like you know. Man, have, those things get stale too quick. Just eat them quicker, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I just don't want to stop talking, Tim. It's been two I don't. weeks. It has. Yeah, it's, it's been, been a while. Two weeks. We'll just keep, we're going to keep going for another hour. Everybody's slow. I mean. Everybody's losing interest. So what the fuck are you guys talking about? <laughs> Time for hour two. Um, After dark. So tailgates this weekend. Are you going out there early? Uh, most likely. Just This is your last hoorah, man. It is. Because you're, I mean, you're going to be in recovery. for. Are you even going to be able to go to the other home playoff games? Nope. I might be able to go to Cup. That's the only thing. It's just, it's unfortunate timing. I need to have it done. Oh, I've been, absolutely. I've been dealing with it for way too long. I know. Um, they'll probably put plastic in my foot, which is appropriate. Oh, well, if you need to get that patched up, I know, I know a guy, that guy being myself, I'll bring over some gallon Ziploc bags and saran wrap. We'll get you hooked oh, up. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> wheelchair accessible dude that was one of the things you remember that whenever i had my last whenever i had my foot surgery a couple of years ago oh we, i do we went to the imax and we got yep. we got elevator access we yep. got everything yep. it was I, I don't feel comfortable enough to put a handicap sign on my my car um but i'll sure take the the escorts inside you get escorts now that's part of being injured whoa does angie know about that <laughs> <laughs> You're ridiculous. Um, ooh, yeah, stroller. Um, yeah, so everybody else, we'll see you guys out there this weekend. Um, next week, Tim will be bedridden, but we'll keep the show going on one way or the other. Angie will be away. So the boys will play. Boys will play. I'm telling you, dude, you're going to come when you babysit me. We are watching a John Claude Van Damme block of movies that day. Lionheart, The Quest. What do you mean that day? I'm coming over the, Friday. Oh, yeah, you're right. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Well, Sunday, I got the Falcons game. Well, you're coming over Friday. Yeah. Why would I not come over Friday night? That's like prime time for hang. That's true. Yeah, that's true. I'm going to get blackout. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed I, to be taking care of me. I'm going to get like, brown out. I've been taking care of you for the past 10 years. It's oh! time for you to take care of me. It's time for you to take care of me just once. Oh that's my all, that's all I god! I want a brownout. Uh, a brownout? <laughs> Can I have a brownout in your house? <laughs> all right. No. Oh my god! Jokes okay. on you guys because I'm going to be sitting in it. You guys, you're gonna no. So you're gonna be on Vicodin. Percocet. Vicodin. Percocet. Sucks. Percocet. Sucks Percocet. Too. Tim. Mm-hmm. So we'll we'll have to think of some fun content. To do with you on Percocet, <laughs> and I'll have a cu- I'll get a couple drinks deep. I won't go overboard, but then we'll just turn on the mic and see what happens. Oh yeah, we're not doing that live though. That's <laughs> oh, we're definitely doing it live. <laughs> no, I don't think that's I don't think that's a thing that's gonna happen. <laughs> 
I don't think that's something that I'm, I'm going to do. Uh, yeah, you are. Uh, or I'm just going to keep the voice memo on the whole weekend on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> just upload all of that shit. <laughs> so all those instances of me saying, oh, I'm nauseous. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, it's not going to be like one of those things where I'm i'm cr like crazy hot i'm just a, i get a stomach ache from it like i get i get, get a little loopy, get pretty good at get pretty good at destiny maybe we can reprise your role in destiny i get really good at sniping yeah. yourself with trip mines no i do that sober <laughs> <laughs> oh i, I can just periscope the whole weekend yeah. i like that yeah or twitch yeah, I'll be twitching. We'll definitely have to come up with some fun movies. If you guys have any movie suggestions for old, old sick Uncle Tim, <laughs> let us know, and we'll. If you guys know any stem cell suppliers around, I'm definitely gonna have to come up with some hashtag content for that weekend. Oh yeah, we'll come up with some fun stuff. We did that uh, a couple of years ago. We had a we had a sleepover for a weekend and watch movies. What do you think about? What do you think about like? I set up the Raspberry Pi and played Turtles in Time all weekend. Yeah, I can do something like that. Maybe get some of the nearest and dearest homies over for some board games and shenanigans. Yeah. Figure it out. All right. Sorry, everyone. Not sorry. You're still here, so clearly you're here for a reason. Find us both on Twitter. Tim, where can they find you at? You can find me at Tim Herb. Uh, you can find me as well at the architect. That's at the underscore ARC number one T E C T collectively at home before dark. That's before spelled B and the number four. Check out get home before dark.com forward slash shop for all your shirts and hats and this and that's <laughs> leave us a rating or review. I don't think we got anything new. No, there's we nothing. still need to your aunties, your mamas, your daddies, your mamas, daddies, everybody, Baby's mamas, mamas, Two reviews is all we need to get to that 150 mark. No, we need four. Four? Mm -hmm. So that's two sets of parents. Yeah. Go out and vote. Brittany S. is right. No. You vote for Home Before Dark with <laughs> ratings and reviews. Don't you vote for nobody unless you vote for us. Um, go leave us a rating or review on iTunes. We'll hear, hear it read loud on the show. Ooh, maybe I could read those when I'm on Perkins. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good incentive. I yeah. like that. So four more. We need four more to get to 150. Atlanta won. Show us some love. It's not going to keep us from doing this thing either way. No. Um, but yes, absolutely. <laughs> Brittany S., Bill Holcomb. Yep. Kevin Kemp is everybody. out here trying to suppress votes. Elliot Beaven, vote for somebody. Look, there is no rating suppressor, uh, suppression here. <laughs> you, don't need a, you, you don't need an ID to put a rating and review on iTunes. You don't need to answer your census to make sure that your <laughs> your vote counts for H before D. It might actually be easier to go vote than it is to have an iTunes account. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, go vote for Stacy Kemp. <laughs> go vote for Ted Metz. Dude loves weed. Ooh. Yeah, there you go. All right. Thank you guys so much. We love the hell out of you. Uh, even you, Dan. I know you're still there. Well, somewhere. Michelle said we killed it and we killed Dan. Okay. Yeah. That's the only reason why Michelle's here. <laughs> Just, Just holding out hope. hope. Yeah. Holding out hope. Is he coming home? Is he coming home? It's good. Dan's coming home. <laughs> Dan's coming home. Hashtag Dan's coming home. Nope. <laughs> All right. Is that it? Uh, yeah. Thank you, guys. We'll talk to you next week. As always, be home before dark. Um, I don't know. I can't think of it. Game anything. over. <laughs> <laughs>